Well, we might be in for a treat today, meeting up with my old buddy Scott Ball. He said the catfish may be biting. Like October 18th, the weather's cooling off. It's only supposed to be like 72 or 3 degrees today. He said we're gonna go down here to the river and do a little bank fishing with some chicken liver. Go ahead and go to my YouTube channel, Neil's Cooking. Like me, share me, hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any of this good fun I'm having. Maybe show you a recipe or two. Let's get going. Well, we're here. I'm two minutes late. Hope I don't catch too much crap. Hey, <laughs> what's going on? Too much. Oh, oh, we're on, we're on tape. We're filming. All right. <laughs> we, uh, I got some night crawlers and some uh, liver. I figure if they ain't biting on that riverside, we'll go over to the lakeside. And sometimes that lakeside, pretty good, ain't it? Well, it is, but you know, this time of year it might be junk fish. But I don't right. care. I just want to feel something pool. Yep. So that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's the funnest part of it. Yep. Yep. That's what it's all about. So, got a couple of things to try and. You know, we're getting on close to noon here, so it's a little bit of a tough time of day, but we got a nice day and we don't want to waste it, so. Yeah, let's get after it. We're going to take a shot. Hell yeah. I didn't know if they'd even still sell them, but I went to Wall Wally World and they had one. The Rhino Rod? Yeah. yeah That's your go-to? Six and a half foot medium heavy is what I like to catch with. You got the Zebcos there? Put it in there. Yeah, I got an 888 and an old 33 classic. That's the... Uh, Go to Christmas present for my kids for the last 30 years. <laughs> they say I'm hard to shop for. I don't know how hard you are to shop for when you take fishy stuff for every right. life. <laughs> Looks like somebody lost their britches. Well, it, it, lots of things happen down here. All the time. <laughs> it ain't all about fishing. <laughs> I used to fit through there, but I don't know. <laughs> the pond right there, my dad and I used to sing crawdads out of that pond. Yeah. For a fish bait. And that, that little pond has held water all my life. I bet there's still crawdads in there. They might be. Like I say, it's been it's been there ever since I know. <laughs> this is over 50 years. Uh oh. Somebody lost their quiver. Oh it damn. That's their hunting errors too. Yeah, them's a good broadheads on it. I don't know. I'll put them up high. Maybe he'll come back. Yeah, maybe he'll see them there. Where he'll see them. Yeah. I hate for somebody to lose their ears. I was worried about having a bucket to set on. Here we go. Uh, you got one. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, well, yeah. <laughs> what year did they take this road out? Oh, it was probably, I was out of high school, probably 79 or 80. Maybe I got a smell. Right. Very, very, very Get set up here and see what we can do. got a south wind it's got your bait kind of coming toward you so right I actually caught a lot of blue cats over on that lake side and we'll be up there feeding next to you when yeah. wind's blowing in your face yeah every year in the winter we have that shad kill and when those shad dead shad they'll, they'll get wind in the south it'll blow them on those south facing banks right now, shallow water those big fish will get in early in the spring they'll come up in three foot of water 30 foot 30 pound fish will come three foot of water right yeah hell i've caught them like that right I off of them bank Hell, you hook them, their tail comes up. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down there? Giving her a little bath. Giving her a little, giving her a little wash. <laughs> gotta, gotta have a little lubrication. Yeah, them zip codes, they need to dunk them every once in a while, don't yeah. they? <laughs> gotta make them mine. You don't have to do it more than once a day. <laughs> Good old chicken liver. Here goes the shad flipping. No, there's one fish in there. Oh, I think your other pole is. Yeah. Hell, you're in a frenzy. Uh-oh. Oh, I missed him. Fuck, he took off mine. I should have waited a little. Hit that so much two, two times real hard. 
That's too slow. Oh, got him too. Yeah, he ain't gonna be a keeper, but you're on the board. Oh, he's than I thought. Hey, nice fish. Oh shit. Catch and release. Didn't want that one anyway. Ah, catch and release. <laughs> Better than I thought he was. Yeah, it was a nice fish. Too Pretty glad we got baloney for a backup. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't hooked as good as I thought he was, I can tell you that. Slid off, didn't he? Yeah, I figured he'd, I figured he'd swallow it. Oh, he's on point. Fish on! Fish on! Oh, he spit it out. Damn it. Well... We're expected to be a little rusty. <laughs> they better get their licks in now. We'll get dialed in. That's a brand new Eagle Claw hook. I don't know why I didn't get him. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I got these stupid circle hooks, and I ain't sure about them. Yeah, they're, they're great for, for setting night lines. I do, but for a rod and reel guy who all their life fish J hooks like I have, right? It's just natural to want to set the hook. Right. You ain't supposed to do that with these. See, I like setting the hook. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's part of it. Catching, catching. Get that old middle fork back swing. Yeah, the old middle fork back swing. Part of it. Well, fuck, there goes my liver. <laughs> well, if a guy don't throw his bait off at least once when he's fishing with liver, he ain't fishing with liver. <laughs> Next time I'll set the hook a little harder, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a little fresh gear. Well, we landed one. You did. A couple plays. Heck <laughs> yeah. He fit in my skillet. <laughs> Let one bigger net go, but that's how it goes. Yeah. Liver, liver's on the board. He's a good, little healthy looking fish. Yeah, they're good looking fish. Sometimes when this river gets low in the fall like this, since it don't connect the lake, they'll get pretty poorly. But that's, that's a good looking fish there. Yeah. Yeah, you got one biting too. Yeah, I do. Look at there. <laughs> oh, that got tiny. I'll just leave it and bring her out. <laughs> Hey! That's a nice fish. Oh, Heck yeah! Hell yeah! On the board! He swallowed mine. Of course. Oh, right off the bat. Right I never even got the pole set down. Yeah. That's about like that last one you caught. That's a decent fish. I mean, it didn't even have time to hit the bottom. Oh shit, I thought I was losing my whole rig. Didn't swallow it either. Nope. You hammered him before he had a chance to think about being in the field. That's a good looking fish. Well, I mean, I know you probably grew up with it just like I did, but this, this is getting to be a lost art. Right. People, people don't do this anymore. Really? They don't rod and reel for catfish. So that crop have taken things over. Before Mark Twain Lake existed, well, this is what everybody did. Right. But people just don't do it anymore. Sure is fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Back when I was a kid, hell, we go every damn day. It seemed like it's hard to find time when you get older, you know. It is. 
Some people probably couldn't even imagine putting these chicken livers on. No. I always thought they kind of give your sandwich a little better taste when you get it a little on your hand there, you know. Get hungry and get your bologna out. <laughs> Best part about fishing chicken liver in the fall is you don't draw flies like you do the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah. you know what I thought he'd score. He said, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Big floor today. <laughs> right next to the back. He didn't hardly even bite. I just could kind of tell he was moving with it. I bet it's far as clear to these assholes. Maybe not. God, that's a good one there. Heck yeah. Talk about it. No, he didn't swallow it. Nope. I did. Talk about a healthy looking fish. Heck yeah. That's a good looking fish. Some bitch will eat good. That's some bitch right there. Yes, sir, e Bob. That's a good one there. Heck yeah. I believe we can kill him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little tonnage there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Hell yes. That that made up for about two of them others. <laughs> we get four or five of them more of them, we'll be in good shape, won't I'd we? Say that's the one that's the ones when I said that down here that time he couldn't he won't carry it. <laughs> <laughs> they say the right bait and the right presentation, you can catch them all day long. A little smaller one there. He's getting nice right here. <laughs> Eight weeks later. <laughs> How many we got now? Five. Got a hell of a good mess of fish here, Neil. Heck yeah. Like I say, if I'd have bothered to help you at all. Oh. <laughs> well, hell, you gotta have a guy to bullshit with. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad a stringer full for. No. And I mean, it ain't been one bite after the other. I mean, uh, you know, it's just here and there. Like I say, good, good stringer fish. It's the time of year. Probably as good a stringer as anybody's caught. Right. That went up the stringer. That's a Go on top of the one ahead of him. No matter how hard. Yeah, that's number seven, ain't it? Yeah. That's a damn good stringer fish. Hell yeah, yes. I like to say, they're readers, too. A hell of a lot better tasting than a can of chicken livers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Not that I don't like chicken liver. No, but that's a good, good drink. <laughs> Fish on there. You got a tree and a fish. Yeah, that tree made him feel better than he is. <laughs> well, that's worked out better than I thought it would. <laughs> and you got your lever. Piece of it. I don't believe he's probably going to make a cut. <laughs> well, we got a pretty good mess of fish. Want to go peel them out? I think we ought to. Let's go peel them out. They were pretty well shut down. Do a little expo. We gave a, we gave a pretty good Pretty good mess. That's a damn good mess right there. I, I really like that, that one. He's a chunk. He's a good one. He's a chunk.
I've dressed them with pocket knife a lot of times. There's lots of lots of ways to skin a cat, ain't there? Everybody has their own method, and, and I think probably everybody learned from their dad, and that's where I learned how to, how to do it. Although my dad never, to my knowledge, ever filleted a fish. That was something I just started doing when I had four little kids at home, and right. my wife didn't think slapping them on the back and giving them a piece of bread was a good enough reason to <laughs> eat fish. So. I just started filleting them and we didn't have to fool with bones after that and, and I just got where I kind of like to do them that way. Smaller fish probably doesn't make any difference, but on a bigger fish, filleting is definitely, there's some undesirable meat on a bigger fish that that's, you can't get rid of if you leave the bone. So right. I've got to where, like I say, I'm so used to filleting everything now, I've done it for years, it's just as fast for me to fillet them this way as it is anything else. So right. I do them this way and, but like I say, this this part right here that's that's his his dad taught him to dress them this way he taught me to dress them this way and back when back when uh, we used to dress them we'd take this top piece like that and pull that fin out there break that spine and pull this out and that'd be your that'd be your piece of fish right but what i do i just i just lay them flat i know some guys like to go some guys like to go from the tail forward mm -hmm. i just lay them flat like that and hold hold the knife blade flat against the rib cage yeah put a little pressure on it and you've just got you just got that rib cage up here at the front to cut around. And once you've cut around this rib cage, it doesn't take about three or four little swipes, even with a dull knife like this one. <laughs> but there's your fillet. And like I say, that's that's fairly easy. Now I do just for cooking purposes, I cut that little tail piece off there because you can't fry a fillet this small without that absolutely going to nothing. You're right. Uh, before. Right. Burn it up, basically. Yeah, so I just get rid of that and water and clean them up real good. And... This coke for me? Huh? This coke for me? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> you. You did a lot of work today. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> but even a fish that small has two really, really good uh, pink little fillets on it. Two oh. nice pieces. That fish probably weighs about a half pound. All right. Perfect for eating oil. These are good, but these are gonna be really good. Hold still, fella. Hold still, buddy. <laughs> Surgery's about complete. Really, the main thing to main thing to get the fillet to come off pretty good is just make sure you put a little pressure on that blade as you're against that rib cage. Right. That uh, that's also keep it away from your fingers. <laughs> right. I forget that at least twice a year. <laughs> but they sell band aids in Paris, so yeah. we're all right. But those are perfect little fillets. Yeah. Yep. They're that's probably. Safe. They come off a lot cleaner like that than I've seen other people do it. You know, it comes off in one good chunk there. Make a hell of a good pole boy, wouldn't it? Yeah. There's really nothing too awful strenuous about this method. It's just one that after you've done it a couple times, you really kind of get a feel for where the where the bones are and stuff. And right. It gets to where you go around them without even really thinking about yeah, them. Yep. I mean, you're not leaving any meat uh -uh. on there. No. And like I say, versus... Uh, the old days when we'd never filleted anything, the only thing you're losing is this tiny little, just tiny little piece right up here underneath the skin on the back. That's the only thing that you're not saving on the fish. So yeah, and it's just, always that real yeah. yellow shit too, you know. Yep. There's just there's just no waste when you do it this way either. Right. And this is just a personal preference, but anytime I'm dressing fish, I like to go from smallest to largest. It just seems like that. If you're going to get a fin in your hand, it's going to be on one of these little ones. <laughs> so <laughs> right. you want to dress in before you get too tired. <laughs> when your attention span is still good, you get tired of dressing fish, you want a big one where you got big handles where you ain't going to run on them fins in you because anybody who's ever done any fishing that's had one of those in there knows that that stays with you a day or two. Oh. Got to keep a little sharpener handy just to keep an edge on the blade. 
about three at a time and then hit her about ten and go again. One of the things when I was a kid, my dad and I fished together a lot. And I was pretty young when he turned me loose with a knife, but part of the deal, if you wanted to go fishing, you, you had to dress fish. So, right. So like I say, I, he showed me how to do it once or twice, and from then on, that wasn't much of a price to pay to get to go fishing. Right. Still isn't. And there's lots of things, you know, living out in this part of the country you can do, but, you know, uh, this is the one that, that for most of us at least, as far as putting something on the table, it's, it's probably the most easy to, to get. Right. Uh, and they're good. Damn well, they're, good. Yeah, they're just really good. And, and like I say, uh, what we did today uh, with, with rod and reels uh, for these fish, is, it really is getting to be a lost art. We've got a lot of line sitting down here on this lake since it came in. And, and the access to the rivers and stuff is not what it was on time, where you could pull off at any bridge in the county and take off walking and fish all day without anybody caring. That, them days are over. Right. Uh, but... If you're willing to work at it just a little bit and kind of know a place or two to go, it can still be done. And like today's what, October 18th? Yep, it's the 18th. So everybody else has got bows on the brain and, and uh, worry about the big buck. And it's 76 degrees. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to deer hunt as much as the next guy, but... Too damn warm yet, ain't it? Yeah, if you shot a deer today uh, and you got good eating out of him, you were awful well prepared to kill one that day because you'd have to be <laughs> right you'd be just as likely to not find him for a day and he's fall so right you know they ain't worth it no nope. and, and rather than rather than sit down and wait for it to cool off we grabbed a rod and reels and i got to go watch Aaron and neil catch a whole bunch of fish it's fun <laughs> you caught a couple i caught a couple and we've all we've all done this enough to know that that you know you never know what days uh, you're on the right spot or the wrong spot but it never matters I sure had fun. I ain't done that in a long time. Well, let's see. I do a lot of it, and and uh, this this turned into a thing a few years ago where we had some falls where it was pretty slow to cool down, and right. rather than hunt, I thought I'd just see if the fish would still bite, and I kind of ran on to this this way of catching them, and and uh, if you can get the weather to stay, uh, it's it's been pretty consistent. Yeah, it's, it's kind of been a year after year thing, and. I have been pretty much going to this one spot, but I think it would work about anywhere. Right. Well, that's catfishing with Scott Ball and a little expo on how to clean him. Want to sign off, Scott? Uh, watch Mr. Neal do the cooking thing. He's, uh, <laughs> he's a, he's a tip-top chef and a pretty doggone good catfisherman. We had a good day. <laughs>